Welcome to a noob's guide to Eltharion. This is Eltharion, Warden of Tor Ivress. In a time where protests over police brutality and abuses of martial power are at an all-time high, the Creative Assembly asks you all to hold their beer and releases Captain McWaterboard here. See, Eltharion is a cop who answers to no one in the defense of his Purple Mountain Majesty, and he'll toss anyone that threatens it into a hole so deep they'll find Mel Gibson at the bottom. But in a world that's overrun by savage hooligans, plague cults, and literal embodiments of evil, it's nice to have the world of Warhammer to escape to, and the one thing you can say about Eltharion is that he doesn't discriminate. Everyone's a suspect in his eyes. Because when you see your family murdered and your home burdened to cinders around you, some people go a little death wish. And some become Batman. Because if the trailer wasn't enough, CA gave Eltharion an actual bat cave beneath Tori Vress to research new and creative ways to strike fear into the hearts of his enemies. Like velour bat cuffs and nightsticks in the shape of 1977 Triple Crown winner Seattle Slough. Because every version of Batman is, at their core, an insufferable dick, and Eltharion is no exception. Because much like the Dark Knight, our feathered friend has to put up with the Ulthuanian Avengers. Teclis is Doctor Strange on multiple levels, Tyrion is Captain America with a sword and an attitude problem, Ilariel is nature, Imric is Aquaman with dragons, and Elithanar is Hawkeye, or Green Arrow, or one of the other random useless bow guys. They even gave Eltharion his own personal Robin, a sword master of Hoeth named Cavill, who has the special White Wolf ability, which which is a reference on a reference to the sexiest man in Hollywood, and so meta it threatens to implode the internet. As Eltharion is the low man on the high elf totem pole, don't expect to confederate these freak shows in your game. Instead, keep an eye on your high elf diplomacy, snagging any trade agreements you can, and generally wheezing your way into their good graces with influence, while also having a plan to end anyone you meet. Because there's nothing more Batman than dropping any potential threats into your own personal Arkham Asylum. The Warden's Cage, besides sounding like a bar in Soho, is the first Warhammer ability that affects both campaign and battle gameplay. When you slap it on someone, they get a movement debuff and a dot, which gives you 25 seconds to capture them before they escape your Pokeball because you weren't pressing down and B fast enough. If you do manage to capture your enemy, Eltharion will then strip them of their basic civil liberties and toss their butts in jail, which then lets you choose between three equally concerning options. Interrogate, where they spill their secrets and give your faction unique buffs indoctrinate, releases them back into the wild as a spy that constantly gives map information and a portion of their income, and execute, which dumps the bodies of generic heroes and generals in a ditch off the turnpike in Hoboken, which is all starting to sound more Punisher than Batman. But as we live in a post-9-11 world, Eltharion is one of Warhammer's more believable characters, as the threat of another terrorist attack on his homeland is literally scripted into the game. Eltharion's campaign is a constant countdown timer to the return of the big green Osama Bin. And Batty, Grom the Paunch, and his gluttonous rolling circus who want to devour elf kind like a bacon, lettuce, and troll tugging sandwich. Eventually, you'll have to defend Tor Ivress from their hordes. Or you can just skip the wait and win the battle on turn one by finding a nice quiet spot in the forest and brooding until it's over. which somehow is still in character. The game still expects you to collect 100 Warden supplies though, so don't expect to get off that easy. And if you play the Mortal Empires campaign, you'll need every one of them to escape the Badlands and get back home again. But why is Grom always looming on the horizon? I mean, besides being large enough to orbit Earth like a lard-filled moon, Eltharion and Grom have what we from the hard streets call beef. When Eltharion was just a young badass, he realized nobody had thought to go to Nagaroth and try beating the emo out of the Dark Elves. Hoping to rectify this massive diplomatic oversight, Eltharion became the first High Elf in history to successfully raid Marathi's backdoor, which for some reason Malekith was rather put out by. Knowing the Witch King would counterattack and try to reclaim his old throne, Eltharion met him with Duel of the Fates blaring over his elven loudspeakers, but Malekith is a punk-ass bitch and brought magic guns to a sword fight. 
Beaten and his army captured, Malekith demanded Eltharion swear loyalty to him. When he refused, Malekith had his executioners kill every last one of them. Then he blinded Eltharion, tortured him, and mailed what was left of the Whimpering Mass back to Ulthuan as a warning to everyone else. Barely alive, Eltharion found his home had been destroyed in his absence, so he harnessed his inner rage to train as a sword master of Hoa, stitching his body back together into an unstoppable Zatoichi-looking mofo. All for revenge. And that's what started the beef between Eltharion the Blind and Malekith the Bitch King. Hold on, something's not right here. <laughs> Eltharion and Grom have beef. Oh shit, they went with the 5th edition version. Oh sorry, Eltharion the Grim has the same Dark Elf Raid backstory, except instead of becoming a blinded witcher knockoff, he's poisoned by a hag witch blade. On Death's Door, he sees a vision of his home being overrun by greenskins and his dear old dad being shanked into kidneys by Grom. The next morning, Eltharion awakes, healed back to full HP with his father's blade, the Fang Sword, magically transported to his bedside. Which means, oh snap, it wasn't a dream at all. Just look at those stats. You know he's about to play a drum solo on Grom's blubbery backside with that thing. And he did. He flew off on his unique griffin, Stormwing, and punted the green tossers back to the old world. And then, just to remind everyone what a badass he was, Eltharion and his best men went into the Tower of Ivress to personally restabilize the damaged waystones and stop the entire world from ending. You know, like heroes do. But instead of endgame, it went all Infinity War, and at the end of their seance, only Eltharion walked back out again, with a thousand yard stare and an intimate knowledge of what exactly goes bump in the night. So it's no wonder he's moody and distant and suffers from what is most likely elven PTSD, after having literally stared into the abyss and still found the balls to shut the door in his face. And yet they still nicknamed him the Grim, because high elves are all douchebags. Regardless of which version you run with, he's still a hybrid sword and sorcery lord, which means he's not as good at melee as Tyrion, not as good as magic at Teclas, and can't fill out a bikini like Ilariel, but is instead generally useful at all times, much like a Leatherman multi-tool or anyone named Jesus. Eltharion's unique skills are all defensively oriented, reducing wall build times, buffing anyone with a shield, and adding a variant of the High Elvis Martial Mastery called Grim Discipline, which lasts until 25% health instead of the normal 50, which, like like Eltharion himself, isn't exactly exciting, but it is super useful. He's really the Toyota Camry of Warhammer. What really sets him apart, though, is his griffin, Stormwing. Normally at this point I make an adult joke of some kind, indicating a salacious relationship, because if there's one thing that never goes out of style, it's jokes about fornication. But not with Eltharion. You see, that's something that happens to other people. I don't think this man has ever had sex, nor desires to. I mean, his body is perfection incarnate, and that chin could cut glass. But imagining it between another elf's legs is borderline blasphemous. Thinking about undulating elven bodies for too long just gives Eltharion an overwhelming urge to polish his armor, and if working himself into a mirror shine still isn't enough, he'll take a long walk in the damp mist of Ivress, which is hell on those ruffled feathers. His spells are pretty keen though. You start with a heal that can cause fear and pick up a damage debuff, a buff to range, an attack, a magic missile, and a vortex to boot. None of it's flashy, but when the dice are down, he probably only cast Expelliarmus anyway. Normally you get a generic version of the DLC Lord as a recruitable general in your campaigns, but the Archmages added with him are Magic Lore General, and about as useful as LEDs on a PC case in a stand-up fight, so plan to pew pew from range. But who really needs more generals when Eltharion's campaign is about this one-man army soloing the Great Green Threat? You'll do this by stockpiling Warden supplies to rebuild your broken home and transform it into a Rube Goldberg machine of death or the house from home alone, both are equally fatal. These warden supplies are gained from completing missions, jailing bad guys, and going balls deep into the badlands to eradicate greenskins. Warden supplies can then be used to either buff the Mist of Ivress, a sort of magical fog that coats your homeland in mystery and sounds super badass until you realize it just adds a couple of buffs to your armies and attrition damage, which still remains useless against the AI and leaves you with damp underpants after sleeping outside in it. Your other option 
option, though, is to upgrade Mist Walkers. Unique to Eltharion's campaign, these Grey Striders of the Mist range far and wide across the hills and valleys of Ivress, and are known to carry broken swords, begging to be reforged, that hint at a noble ancestry that they just never shut up about. Knights of Torgaval are three griffin riding mad lads that require specially designed saddles just to accommodate their massive balls. The Skyhawks are archers, except with stalk, vanguard, a bonus versus infantry, and arrows that penetrate deeper than Danny D. Sentinels of Astaril are shielded Lothar and sea guards, but with more range and the shield breaker effect. Spire Guard of Tori Vress are Lothar and Sea Guard again, but with Unbreakable and more ammunition. While Athel Tamara Faithbearers are Silver and Guard, but with Swords and Frenzy. But when you realize all these guys share the same coloration, it becomes super obvious which half of this DLC drew the short straw. Here's a hint: he shares animations with Teclas and looks a bit like Homelander from the Boys. Mist Walkers are unlocked by rebuilding Tori Vress. Each new level of the main building gives gives you one more to hire, which is a bit like handing someone a single potato chip. All it does is make you want to inhale the whole bag. But unless you're recruiting for Eltharion's personal army, you're far better off going with the new top-tier High Elf Spearman unit, the Silver and Guard, since Redline skills don't actually apply to Mistwalkers. Silver and Guard, on the other hand, are the truest expression of a staunch line of spears, able to hold a line longer than Tony Montagna. Your other starting units are a smorgasbord from the DLC. White Lions are a fast beast unit with armor piercing and anti-infantry, which as Tiger King shows, is startlingly accurate. But they do lose two points from Gryffindor since the renowned variant isn't named the Ghost and the Darkness. White Lion Chariots are Ithilmar Chariots, but better because lions. They cause fear, attack harder, deeper, and with 30% resistance to any STD missiles, because they might be savage, but they play it safe when plowing into a bunch of guys. Combine them with the White Lions of Trace, and you may be tempted to try an all-catman army, but I don't advise it, as it's something you can never financially recover from. Arcane Phoenix is... 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 is are overpriced, fiery toucans that can dive into the ground to heal itself and roast any nearby marshmallows. They have both physical and magical damage resistance, and the one you start the campaign with will be your clutch player for the entire game. So, pretty sweet new additions all around. Good job, everyone. Oh, and there's rangers. In the lore, rangers are mist walkers armed with long bows and swords who ambush their prey and then disappear back into the mists without being seen. Here, they have two swords and a YOLO tattoo, which makes them useful as an early game alternative to spearmen when you need to chew through lightly armored trash, like goblins. Or the inevitable Tomb King's invasion you'll face in the Badlands. Just watch out for Arcan the Black. Trust me on that one. So if you want to play both good cop and bad cop, Eltharion the Warden is ready to tell Grom where he can put his punch and go down in greenskin history as the pointy Ed what gives a proper flight. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, join, or better yet, just stay safe out there and tell me which noobs guide you'd like to see next below.